Okay, welcome back. You're listening to the weekend edition of the Portland Economics Report. As I've said numerous times during the course of this particular show, it is originating in its entirety from the Cambridge House International Investment Conference up in Vancouver, British Columbia. I'll say it once more, I think this is the best conference north of the border, and I think it is truly one of the best conferences in the world. I'm chatting right now with Larry Ray. Now, before we begin our conversation, I have to say something in the interest of full disclosure. Number one, I own stock in Larry's company. Did Larry give me the stock? No, I wrote a check to my broker, we bought the stock. Point number two, Larry's a sponsor on our site with American Manganese. Why is he a sponsor on our site? Because Big Al really likes the company. We mostly follow, almost in, in, in the entire scope uh, of our sponsor companies are gold and silver because I really believe in precious metals. Let me tell you, I also believe in diversification. And the story that Larry has with American Manganese, in my opinion, is, is really, really fantastic. Let's start out, Larry, with now, you've, you've had a couple of gold companies. They've gone into production, et cetera. You're now in Arizona with American Manganese. Why, why did you start in that area? That's where the manganese is. Well, I, I know that. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, I mean, the reality is there's no production of uh, manganese, and it's not a well-known metal right. on uh, this side of the uh, world. Certainly it's well-known in uh, South Africa. It's well-known in Australia and uh, China and mm -hmm. Europe. But uh, here in North America, with no production of it, again, it's just a mystery. Right. We've been trying to uh, educate everybody about manganese now for several years. When we were looking for a deposit, uh, we luckily managed to uh, obtain the largest deposit of manganese in the United States. Yep. It was overlooked because of the low grades. Even though it had had production back in the 50s and the 40s uh, for the strategic stockpile, and the U.S. Bureau of Mines had done a lot of work on it. Uh, they had developed the uh, sulfurous acid process, <clears throat> which works so well on our ore that uh, we can get uh, all, the, all the manganese out in 10 minutes to uh, an hour and a half. No kidding. Uh, yeah. 90, in the high, mid-90s. Uh, percent recovery so that's only part of the battle uh, and the other part is how do you process it at the end so you've got a good clean product for electroplating well correct me if i'm wrong but in order to solve that particular problem your power plant's up and or, i'm sorry your uh, uh plant is up and running now well the uh the pilot plant yeah pilot that, plant that's completed now al and yeah. it was successfully completed um, we've got all the results, all of our uh, concepts about the process have been proven out. Uh, it'll be used in the pre-feasibility study next month. Uh, those results are uh, certainly going to uh, set us on a new course, which means I think you're we'll right. have more definitive numbers to work with. We'll have more definitive numbers to talk to off-takers, potential joint venture partners, and of course financing. So, you know, we're all anticipating uh, the uh, 43101 uh, pre-fees. What are you looking at, just in terms of a release date on that ballpark? 90 days, within 90 days? No, it's, uh, hopefully we're shooting for the mid-February. Mid, uh, okay. I hate setting myself a solid date. I get criticized for not doing it, but right, right. things are out of your control. And, well, uh, you've been in the game a long time, and you know that you know the worst thing you can do to your shareholders or to potential shareholders is make a prediction and then not have it come true. That's that's absolutely terrible. Let's let's get around to the financing and not the financing, but the capital side of the picture, Larry. Now, last time we talked, you're in pretty good shape in terms of capital. You you can go into the certainly the near term without raising any more money. Is that correct? That's correct. And then after that, production will take care of revenues from production will take care of the majority of your capital needs. Right. Well, no, we still need to raise the capital and put the mine into production, and we still need more capital to uh, complete uh, no, the work that I, we're doing. I understand that, but the thing that I want my listeners to be aware of is that, yes, you do need to raise more money, but there is, there is on the income statement, there is another side of the story, and that is money from production. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's important a, to realize. That's the goal, and, uh, you know, we're still aiming for mid-2014. Uh, we've had ongoing uh, environmental work done on the property in the last year. That's continuing. 
And, uh, you know, we've had preliminary meetings with the BLM. We've had uh, meetings with concerned people. Uh, for sure, uh, we're not... Uh, our project, Al, is a clean, green technology. Yeah. That makes, you know, one of the products is certainly used in the green team, a clean green area, which right. is the battery powder. So, you know, this is, uh, when, you, when you're when you working in an environment like that, you, you, you don't have those huge hurdles of, uh, con of uh, preconception to knock down that uh, some of our friends in copper and gold have. Well, exactly, exactly, and that, you know, and that's another important point. Larry, let's talk a little bit about the uses of manganese. Now, uh, batteries is the first thing that comes to my mind. Certainly batteries uh, use what they call electrolytic manganese dioxide, and that's made on the anode. We make the metal. Metals used in uh, stainless steels and specialty steels, in the aluminum industry, and electrical industry, and then at industries like welding and pigments and uh, the smaller portion of it. I find it absolutely fascinating that, that given the high demand and necessity of manganese in, in, in industry, it's amazing to me that the United States imports all of their all of their needs right now. Well, they kind have of scary. Been, it's uh, well, certainly it was very scary if you go back and look at some of the articles that were written in Time magazine back in uh, in the '40s, for example. Uh, yeah. It you know when manganese became critical. I mean, you let's face it, the biggest thing that manganese is used in is a manufacture of steel. Yeah. Production of steel. Right. There's no replacement for it. There's absolutely no substitution. You have to have it or you don't have steel. Right. And uh, as you know, steel's the backbone of uh, any... Any, uh, any industrial economy in the world. Right. Any exactly. industrial economy in the world. Exactly. You know, it's, it's, it's very interesting to me that, well, a couple of things. Number one, with the... Uh, I publish my portfolio on our site and... It's very interesting to me in looking at our sponsor companies and in looking at companies that I'm invested in. 2011 was kind of a tough year, Larry, in terms of the market, but yet your company uh, really stayed up there pretty well. So that's showing that there is uh, interest in what you're doing because you've got a very unique situation. That's true. Uh, although we did uh, we did lose half of our value. Uh, well, but you and, didn't uh, go below you didn't go below the price at the beginning of the year, which, no, was, which was thirty no. cents. I mean, everybody lost a lot of money. There's no question about that. But but your your particular situation stayed above where it was in January. I mean, right. I know that for a fact because I bought it in January. So, it's it's an interesting company. It's a very unique company. Let's wrap this up. Tell me a little bit about your management team, real quick. Our management team, we have, uh, of course, Mike McLeod, our COO. He's the, uh, been involved in this type of uh, endeavor before. Uh, he makes sure that the uh, everybody's on their game when it comes to the pre-feasibility right. and uh, that Cometco are on their game. We try to keep them uh, on the timeline. Other things, uh, of course, change the timeline. But uh, Mike's an integral part of my management team. I have a staff at the office that, uh, that uh, not directly involved in mining, but involved in the internet and the uh, and basically in our uh, uh, you know financing activities and uh, all these people pull together to make a uh, a team that can see successfully see a project through from an idea to finally being completed. And that's the exact reason that Big Al wrote a check to buy the stock. Okay, having said that, remember, not investment advice. I am not a registered investment advisor. Remember, I own the stock. Remember, they're a sponsor on our website. You want to get more information? Click on their banner. We're going to be right back.